Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm standing right outside the new Burroughs Avenue entrance to Sydenham Station. Let's take a look. This is the first of two new entrances that have been built as part of the Sydney Metro project. And as you can see, it's below the new aerial concourse. This new entrance is on the eastern side of Burroughs Avenue, between George Street and Hogan Avenue. It quietly opened on Friday the 24th of February 2023, and I didn't even realise that this entrance had come into use until I came here over a month later. At that time, very few people were using it, but it has picked up more recently, as word has got around. Close to the entrance is this landscaped plaza that also provides some physical protection from the nearby roads. And with some seating provided, it's a nice area to relax and chill out. It's wonderful to see some secure bicycle storage. It's free to use and you can access it with your Opal card. And if it's full, there are additional bicycle hoops next to it. Closer to the entrance are your typical vehicle barriers and adjacent to one of them is a water refill station. And I was very pleased to see that. On the other side are a couple of shelters, one for taxis and one for kiss and ride. As you'd expect, there is a canopy over the entrance to provide protection from the sun and rain. It's made up of anodized aluminium panels that are exactly the same as the ones used on the staircase canopies, but painted in silver rather than bronze. Adjacent to the Opal Gate are next train displays for both Sydney trains and Sydney Metro services, although you'll need to wait a few months for the next Sydney Metro train. There are three normal Opal Gates and two wider ones on either side. And these gates lead directly to Platform 6. Over on the right is the lift from this platform to the new aerial concourse, and this is not yet in service. Going around to the left leads you to the new aerial concourse stairs, which currently go to platforms 3 to 5. I covered this new concourse in my last video, so do check that out. The new aerial concourse continues to provide stair access to platforms 3 to 6 only, with none of the lifts in service as yet. And according to this poster, it will fully open when Sydney Metro services start next year, which is what I was expecting. And that means that the new railway parade entrance will also open when Sydney Metro services start. I'm now going to update you on Marriottville dive site and trains facility south by jumping on a few trains. But before I do that, we need a map. So by December 2022, all the tracks have been laid. So in the following on-train footage, I'll be focusing on the installation of overhead wires on the Eastern Bypass track, the Western Bypass track, the Sydney Metro running lines, and the Shuntneck track. This was on a train from St. Peter's to Sydenham during December 2022, and was included in my previous update. So it will remind you of the story so far. At this time, there were no overhead wires on the Eastern Bypass track, but staunchions were in place and ballast tamping was happening as well. Overhead wires had already been installed on the Western Bypass track, which is now veering off into Trains Facility South. And the gantry crane shed was refusing to budge. And there was no sign of any overhead wire structures within the Marrickville dive site portal. You can see work happening on the overhead wires within Trains Facility South as well. Overhead wire structures then appear for the Sydney Metro running lines, but have no wires on them as yet. These overhead wires are for the Shuntneck track, and were the only ones in place on the approach to Sydenham Station, currently ending just here. So from here onwards, it was overhead wire structures only. And as you may remember from previous videos, the platform screen doors have been in place for a few months now, with the last ones being added during June and July 2022. So now approaching the dive site structure on the 11th of January 2023, and the gantry crane shed has finally gone, and an overhead wire structure has appeared in its place. And then a little further along, we have the second overhead wire structure. And as the tracks reach the surface, there is a third one. Now taking a look in the other direction. You can see the posts pointing downwards, and the overhead wires will be attached to these soon. And as the tracks descend, the overhead wire structures do too. And there's a fourth one hidden just here. Now back at Sydenham Station, looking at the metro platforms, and you can see that all the overhead wire structures are now in place. This was also on the 11th of January. Under the yellow boxes between the tracks are valises, and these are part of the signalling system. 
Their purpose is to identify where the trains are, how fast they're going and in which direction they're going in. And if anyone knows the purpose of the yellow boxes that are between the running lines then do let me know in the comments. This footage was taken on a heritage train and I'm right next to the diesel loco with the window open, so no reflections. This was on the 29th of January. You can either look out for changes or just enjoy the diesel sound. That was a former Victorian Railways 3rd Series X-Class locomotive that was in dire need of a repaint, but I'm sure East Coast Heritage Rail will do that when funds allow. So from this heritage train, the main things I noticed were arms for the overhead wires and insulators, but still no actual overhead wires. So it's now the 19th of March 2023 and I'm back at Sydenham Station and still no overhead wires for the Sydney Metro tracks. But the next train displays were switched on. Now back on a train, and the overhead wires have now been installed on the remainder of the shunt neck track. On the two Sydney Metro running lines, the arms, insulators and other components for the overhead wires were now in place. Now approaching one of the junctions into Trains Facility South, and the overhead wires make it easier to spot where the lines diverge. I've covered the track layout in detail in previous videos, so if that interests you, then do check these out. Now approaching the Marrickville dive site portal, and the first overhead wires are now visible. And these continue all the way into the dive site structure, descending with the tracks until they disappear from view. The line closest is the eastern bypass track, and this was still waiting for the overhead wires to be installed. And the already electrified western bypass track is now joining this line. And here is a close-up of this junction from the Bedwin Road Bridge. Notice the points indicator just here. This is now on the 14th of April, and this footage wasn't as good as normal due to the sun being in the wrong place, but you'll see why I included it in a moment. So now approaching the buffer stops for the Eastern Bypass track, and the overhead wires were literally going up in front of my eyes. So that's a tiny bit of Sydney Metro history in the making and these brand new wires continue under the Bedwin Road Bridge. The Eastern Bypass track was the last of the Trains Facility South access lines to have overhead wires installed, and it was one of the last tracks to be laid as well. On the Sydney Metro running lines, lots of work is happening to complete the installation of the remaining overhead wires, and that's because one week later, the first Metro train would go under the harbour and come out at this end. Here is another look at this work in the other direction. I don't know about you, but I quite enjoy watching other people working. So now heading towards Sydenham again, and both the Sydney Betcher running lines and the Eastern Bypass track are all wired up and ready for action. And on the approach to Sydenham station, you can see that the overhead wires have been installed on the tracks serving the Sydney Metro platforms. And here they are. The lower wires that the train's pantograph collects the current from is called the contact wire, and in Sydney there are two of these wires. Why do you think that is? Let me know in the comments below. Above these are the two catenary wires, and these vertical wires called droppers connect them both together. 
At the southwest side of the station, the overhead wires currently end in style, just beyond the Gleason Avenue road bridge. This is now on the 17th of May, and I've just got a glimpse of a Sydney Metro train in Platform 2, but by the time I got close enough to film it, it had scarpered. But we might still see it. And this was nearly a month after the first Sydney Metro train continued from Chatsworth Station under Sydney Harbour and Sydney CBD, and arrived at Trains Facility South. And that occurred on the 21st of April, and was a major milestone in the Sydney Metro project. And a couple of weeks later, test trains started running into Sydney Station. And of course, for all this to happen, the overhead wires needed to be completed and energised. Look out for the steps and ramps within the sidings. These are for train crew and maintenance engineers to board and alight from the Sydney Metro trains. And here is the one that got away from me at Sydney Station. At least it didn't go into the tunnels. With all the dive site portal construction work finished, the point where trains go underground is now much easier to spot. When passing through again on the 4th of June, there were two Metro trains stabled. And since then, I've always noticed one or two trains in the sidings whenever I've gone past. I'll show you some more trains shortly, but before I do, here's a quick recap on the electrification of Trains Facility South. All the overhead wire structures were in place by July 2022, and at the end of October, the first overhead wires had appeared, and by December, it looked like most of them were in place. Overhead catenary is complex and requires lots of intricate work, and this continued throughout January, February and March 2023. And by April, all the work had been completed. Now viewing Trains Facility South from the Marrickville Metro Shopping Centre car park, and you can see two stabled Sydney Metro trains. This was in July. Each siding is long enough for two trains, as you can see from this reversed on-train footage. So with eight sidings, Trains Facility South can stable 16 trains. 23 brand new trains were ordered as part of the Sydney Metro City and Southwest extension, and many of these have now been delivered, and I believe some are already in service on the Metro Northwest line between Talawong and Chatswood. If you've been on one of them, do let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to know whether the new trains are identical to the existing ones or have some upgraded features. Seeing trains stabled here is something I've been looking forward to and imagining for many months now. There is another set of steps and a ramp for each siding at this end. And although these trains are driverless, these are still needed for staff to board and alight easily. The infrastructure maintenance road track has been in place since last year, but has been difficult to spot until now. It's just here and being within an embedded track slab, it looks more like a tram track. You can also see some points indicators within the sidings for the junctions ahead. They're technically not signals, as that's all computer based, but they do provide a visual confirmation when the train is being driven manually, and for other staff working close to the tracks. It's now time for a quick update on the buildings, starting with the high voltage or HV yard. In January 2023, the HV yard looked like this, and hadn't changed much from how it looked in my last update. And it didn't look much different in March, except for a few more vertical posts for the external wall. Here is a view of it from Bedwin Road, and on the railway side, the wall had started to appear. This is now in June, with a good chunk of the wall now visible on this side, and with the wall appearing on the Bedwin Road side too, and almost all of it on the railway side. Now in July, with most of the wall now done, and this is probably the last time you'll be able to see the HV components inside. And now on the railway side, with the wall now completed, and a good view of the Eastern Bypass track too. I'm looking forward to seeing a Metro train running on this soon. Now for the services building, which looked like this in January, and pretty much the same in March. Note the scaffolding on the rail corridor side, which had gone by July, so I think we can mark this one as completed. Those last two buildings are part of the operational railway, the remaining ones are all part of Trains Facility South, and I'll start with the reception security and fire control room building, which was already pretty much finished in January, and had secure entry gates by March, with landscaping around the building by July. And if you were lucky enough to be invited on a tour of Trains Facility South, you would enter via this access road, which is also now complete. The covered storage building was completed last year, and if you need a reminder, it looks like this. And now for the next building, which I still don't know the purpose of, but it looked like this in January. 
and pretty much the same in March. And in July too, so I guess it must be finished. If you have any ideas about what this will be used for, then do share this in the comments below. And now for the workshop, which looked like this in January. And the same in March, and in July too, so this must have been completed. Next is the admin building, which in January had some strange holes and was quite unfinished on the southwest side. And by March, the unfinished parts had become ventilation grills. And with no further changes by July, I reckon this admin building is finished as well. So last but not least is the groundwater treatment plant. And this had been completed by the end of 2022, with the black perimeter fencing added by March 2023. And the same black perimeter fencing was also in place along the whole of this side of Trains Facility South, which means that this land in front will soon be relinquished by Sydney Metro and developed for other purposes. And this land on the other side of Sydney Steel Road looks like it's ready for redevelopment as well. So now back at Sydenham Station on the new aerial concourse and a Sydney Metro test train is tantalisingly close. But this one wasn't scarpering, it was coming straight towards me. This is set number 28, so it's one of the newer trains that were built for the City and South West extension. Sydney Metro trains will stop quite a long way up the platform, and that's because platforms 1 and 2 were extended on the northeast side to make them completely straight, so the slightly curved part of the platform at this end will not be used. And I reckon this is one of the reasons for building the new aerial concourse and entrances at the other side of the station, as these connect directly to the middle of the Sydney Metro platforms. Here is a closer look at this test train and the start of the straight part of Platform 1. And I couldn't resist getting the new train through the Heritage Platform awning. Or from the Gents Toilet entrance, maybe that was too much information. Now back on the new aerial concourse and I think it might be ready to depart. So that brings the Sydenham Station, Marrickville dive site and Trains Facility South update to a close. And if you're hungry for more, a playlist is now appearing on the top right that contains all my earlier update videos which go back almost three years. Link is also in the description as well. Wow, what a wonderful way to finish this video and that was totally unexpected. So if you enjoyed it, please do give this video a like and do leave a comment or question below and I'll do my best to answer it. And please subscribe if you haven't already and check out my Patreon perks via the link below. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.